Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem linked list in binary tree. And before I even get into this, I just want to mention that this is once again, very, very similar to a problem in the neat code 150 list. So if you did find this problem challenging, I would highly recommend going through that list. I'll even tell you what the problem name is. So if you go to neat code IO, the neat code 150 list, search for subtree, you will find this question here. I won't show you the solution just yet, but I'll tell you that this problem is nearly identical to the one that we're going to solve today. Well, very, very similar at least. So let's get into it. In this example, we're actually given a linked list as one of the parameters. It's going to look like this. We're also given a binary tree, which they've already given us a picture of. What we want to know is, is there a path within this tree that doesn't necessarily start at the root? It could start at any node in the tree. Is there a path that goes downwards? When we say downwards, it means that from a node, we can either go to the left child or the right child. We can't go back up and we definitely like can't do something like that. It has to be like this, pretty straightforward, I think. Does a path like that exist that matches the linked list? Obviously, in this case, it does. Four, two, eight is the same as all of these values. So we would return true. If it doesn't exist, we return false. So how do we go about solving this problem? Well, thankfully, a brute force approach is actually going to be sufficient. And this problem, in my opinion, is slightly easier than that subtree one that I was talking about. That one involves determining if two trees are the same. But this way, we just look at like a list of values and see if they exist. So what we want to do, the brute force would involve start at every single node, like every single node should be considered as the head of the list. Now, clearly four here is not the head, so we can't really consider it as the beginning. So we have to skip this. And then we would do the same thing perhaps with the left child and see, okay, maybe this is the head. And we would do the same thing with the right child. Okay, maybe this one is the head. Now, if they are, let's uh, start with the left path. Okay, four actually does match this one. So now what do we do? Well, we don't know from here whether we should go to the left child or the right child. Let's try both of them. Now we're looking for this guy. So if we were maintaining a pointer perhaps to this node, we would probably want to shift it now to the next node. This is our target node that we're looking for. So we try to go left here, there's nothing. We try to go right, okay, there's two. It's the same value, great. So now we found this one as well, and we would shift the pointer here at the last node, but we find that it's a one on this side and null on the right child here. So we did not find the full linked list down the left path. Let's try it on the right side. Okay, we got a four, that's good. We go left, okay, we got a two, that's good. Okay, we go left, that's six, that's not good, not what we want. Okay, now let's go right. Okay, we have eight here and we have eight here. And now we're done. This is the solution. We found it returned true. How do you know that we're done though? Like in terms of code, how would you have known that we're done? We reach null in the tree? Nope. When we reach the end of the linked list, even if there's still nodes left in the tree, it doesn't matter. That's perfectly okay. The, the path doesn't actually need to end. It doesn't need to end at null. So this is fine. At this point, we would return true. This example doesn't quite illustrate the fact that this is a brute force solution because quite frankly, even this brute force solution is going to be pretty efficient in most cases. The time complexity of this is theoretically going to be uh, n times m where these are like the sizes of these data structures because theoretically this could be considered like the head from this node, from this node, this node, from every single node. And in the worst case, we might go through most of the linked list for each of those nodes before getting towards the end and realizing we didn't find the solution. That's theoretical. I mean, can you even think of an example where that would actually happen? What would an example like that even look like? I can think of one. Imagine you had this tree. Suppose it's filled with all zeros. Suppose we had a different linked list. Suppose it looked something like this, a bunch of zeros and then a one right at the end. Well, now we've gotten into the worst case scenario. This is technically the head of this. It's going to work. Like we're going to get all the way down to the left and we got through four nodes, but then the last one didn't work. 
even if you can implement the brute force solution of this problem, I think that's very, very good. But if I was interviewing you, I would ask you, well, what possible example would your solution not be very efficient on? If you couldn't think of an example like this one, then I would kind of assume you don't fully understand the solution that you just wrote. That said, though, most interviewers probably won't ask you something like that. I just think that this demonstrates a deep understanding of what you're actually doing here. And actually, one thing I missed in this approach is the fact that the root path actually is the valid one. If we were trying to think of a better example, maybe you can think of one where the root path actually isn't the correct one. So maybe we could add some more nodes here. We could change this to a zero and then uh, make the child a one or make an even longer path, something like that. I hope you kind of get the idea of what I'm going for here. But now let's code this up. So while this is technically a brute force solution, it's actually not going to be trivial. It's not easy. Though the code is going to be very similar to this problem, I'm going to use the same trick that we used in this problem. And that is going to be this. I'm going to have a helper function. Could probably write a better name for this. Um, it's going to have two parameters. One is going to be the list node, the current list node, and of course the current tree node. We know that there's going to be some base cases. If not list node, that's the good one. That's the one where we return true. We reach the end of the linked list. I mean, maybe we start with an empty linked list. I don't know if that's actually possible in this problem, but it could be. So here we would return true. Now, the other case is if this one did not execute, then this must be non-null. So if now, if the tree node is null, well, that's when we probably should return false. That's one of the cases where we return false. The other case, of course, is when the values are not equal. Equal. So or list node.val is not equal to tree node.val. If this does not execute, then they must be equal, in which case we can do the recursive step. Do you remember what that is? Well, there's going to be two possibilities. We call the helper function, of course, going to the next list node. But for the tree node, we could either go to the left or the right. So we're going to try both of them and we're going to return the result of that recursive call here. So with Python, if the first one turns out to be true, it actually won't execute the second one. So we won't end up doing any unnecessary work. Now, this helper function is sufficient for checking if a given node in this tree matches the linked list. But we have to try, in the worst case, every possible node in the tree. What I'm actually going to do is call the function here as well, the recursive function here. I'm going to make the outer function also recursive. So what we try is first check if the helper from the head of the linked list which is given to us matches the root of the tree that is given for us, then just return true. We're already done. Amazing. Otherwise, down here, if the head does not match the root, what should we do? Well, we probably want to compare the root.left with the head. And we probably want to compare root.right with head. But should we do that by using the helper functions? Because we could, we could use these and put them here. But if those evaluate to false, then we're done. So that's actually not the correct solution. That limitation would only compare the head with the root and the root's uh, direct children. But what about the children of the children? Well, for that, we can actually use this function, like the function that we've actually defined. So self dot is subpath and then pass in the head for the linked list and pass in root dot left. Do the same thing with root dot right. So now what this will do at a high level, first it'll check, okay, is the linked list the same from the root? Okay, if not that, then recall this function out here, redo it with root dot left and root dot right. Okay, and if that doesn't work, well then recall the same function with the children of those children and just keep doing that every time we do not find the match. So this is pretty much the correct solution. One more thing I'll add quickly here, and I actually missed this the first time I was submitting my solution, so don't feel too bad if you missed it as well. Imagine we keep going down root.left and we don't find a match for the head. Well, eventually the root's gonna become null, and then we're gonna get a null pointer exception here. So to avoid that, let's add an if statement, if not root, return false. So that's the whole code. Let's run it now. As you can see, it works and it's pretty efficient. There's one thing I'm actually curious about with this solution, and that is the fact that in Python, it's an interpreted language. I wonder if every time that we call this function, if it's gonna redeclare this function over here, even though it's not gonna necessarily execute it, it's gonna redefine the function every single time. I wonder if there's overhead with that. And if we can actually take this and move it out, could we actually make this more efficient? 
and make it like a member of the class itself. So we can do that just by adding some keywords. So adding self here, adding self to all of the recursive calls, and then adding self to this function call just like we did down here. So let me just do that. I guess we won't know if this actually improves the runtime because the runtimes on leak code are pretty random, but I guess this time it did. So with that small sample size, who knows? But thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. I'll be launching a system design newsletter pretty soon. It'll also cover a lot of data structures and algorithms. Stay tuned for that. I'll see you soon.